It's been a week of innuendos and backlash as a fierce nigga is being lambasted for labeling her fellow woman barren. We'll have a conversation on that later on. We'll turn our attention to the call on celebrities to reject the anti terrorism campaign ambassadorial deal. These and many other issues we have tabled for a discussion in this episode of Bloggers Forum. I am Benefo Boabin Abrantipan. Thanks for joining us on Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. The name is Abrantipan. My guests are seated. McDonald Nane Asari, aka Romeo, is an event organizer, a tease manager, a columnist, Medina Social Welfare Assemblyman, and a member of the Miss Ghana team. Romeo, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Abantipa. Ibi Aboko, Madina Tisei. Madina Aboko. Nice one. The man who has been away, just because he was shooting a video, video keke no cha. Hey! Oh, friend, and now, oh, I'm shooting a video. Oh, I'm shooting a video. <laughs> Author of the book, Everything That Happened and the People Who Made It. Nenebi is an author. A lawyer in the making. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Welcome. It's really yeah. been a long time. Yeah. More than a month, right? It's more than a month. More yes. than a month. I've been quite busy. Not just shooting the video. Video. The video happened just one week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Aside that, I was working on other stuff. You know, okay. I don't live in Accra, so mm -hmm. usually when I am coming to Accra, it means that some money issue day. Yeah. So I didn't have money issue in Accra mm -hmm. for the past one month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, economy na yendo. I I didn't. Yeah. But what video? What video was it though? It was a video. For, and it was a video and photo shoot in promotion for my book. And oh. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. The picture I sent to you. Uh -huh. I thought people. Would the be one you distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> the one I thought people would be doing Vogue. Uh -huh. This week. So you sent you, you sent your picture. Yes. Yeah, so that so that we we'll use it for Vogue. So that you you wish me happy birthday this week. Ah. My birthday was on Monday. Are you serious? Yeah, so by posting Deleted my picture. happy birthday. Thank you. So by Today we'll use your picture for Vogue. <laughs> Everett is not there, so we'll put Nenebi's picture there. <laughs> and then we'll describe what he is wearing. What are you wearing in your... You're in your Vogue, no problem. <laughs> what are you wearing in there? What am I wearing? I'm, it's a... What's it? It's a jeans mm -hmm. jacket mm -hmm. designed by my kid brother, who is also a designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chante Ado. And he combined two different styles of jeans. So one aspect of it is very official. Mm -hmm. Another aspect of it is rugged. So that combines my two personalities. You okay. Know. Sometimes uh, I'm a gentleman. Uh, rags to riches. Uh, rags to riches. Sometimes I'm a gentleman. <laughs> sometimes I'm a gangster. So mm -hmm. the combination of the two. And then the neck had a different feel to it. Mm -hmm. And then the jeans, just to complement it. And then, you know, my favorite shoe brand is Adidas. Okay. Every time I want to buy a different brand, I go to the shop. And then I see an Adidas brand, and then I mm. buy Adidas. So I had to, you know, represent. So, them. so where are you standing? What's and the where is the location? The location is What's somewhere the location? in Debris. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm. And so the picture actually represents Afrobeat. Okay. You know, Afrobeat is a combination of different styles of music. Mm. You know, there's a fusion of Western style. There's a fusion of Ghanaian style. There's a yeah. fusion of Nigerian style. There's a fusion of these days, there's a fusion of South African style into mm. Afrobeat. Mm. So my outfit is supposed to represent that confusion that we call Afrobeat. How is that promoting the book? If you say it's a photo shoot for the book. Yeah, so there is a photo, uh, what they call, there's, there's a fashion term for it. I'm not a fashion person. Mm. It's, called, it's a lookbook. Okay. Yeah, a lookbook is... Uh, I, I, I can't describe, but I know it's a lookbook. Uh, so I, the photo is from the, this lookbook I created for my book. The lookbook is called The Married at Birth Afrobeat. Mm, mm. So there are different concepts in, in the lookbook. Mate, Romeo, you have a photo shoot in him that way. I mean, that's all 21st course. Uh, My last man standing. Mm. I shut the door on all birthdays. I see, I see. Then a belated happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Free your mind. Okay, so there's a lot of issues happening this week, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure which one I should ta tackle. On first and foremost, we are shooting this on t uh, on Thursday, mm. a day after Black Stars win over Madagascar in our quest to you know qualify for Afcon, and Ghana qualifying for Afcon is our bet right. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be in AFCON every time. I think the only time we didn't qualify for AFCON was in 2004, right? 
me, I'm, I don't know, me, I'm, I'm, I'm not a sports person. I'm so not a sports one. person either, but okay. Black Stars is very important to our national fire brief. Mm. And I think gradually Black Star is winning back the love that Ghanaians have lost. And I like that now we have a string of wins which are important to make. But then the, what I really want to talk about is this guy, uh, Afina Jan, right? Mm -hmm. I'm r in the game against Nigeria, he did well. But there's something that I noticed. You know, African football requires more physicality than skill. Mm -hmm. African football is very physical. That is why Ghana will score countries which play better football than in the world. And then you play against Burkina Faso and Mali and be losing to them, right? Because they have more physical strength. And so uh, against Nigeria, I think that they were kind of bullying him with their physicality, even though he was more skillful. And so he, he sort of got tired easily, right, earlier. But in this game, I noticed that he is growing in the African terrain. You know, he, after African High School, he went to Europe. So I don't think that he's used to the African style of football yet. But this is his third game for the national team. And it looks like he's gaining his composure. So I'm excited about what we are going to do to Portugal. In the World Cup, mm. we need to. Even if you are going to be uh, to leave the World Cup in the group stages, we need to score Portugal. That is because we lost to them when they were very bad in 2014 because of you know the money in the plane. Mm -hmm. But now that we don't have any money in the plane, we have to score Portugal and humiliate them, even if they are going to lose to Korea. So I'm excited for the future of the Black Stars in the upcoming World Cup. That's all I want to talk about for now. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, I mean to you. Well, I think uh, to free my mind, I feel there are things we need to put right. Um, as public speakers, there are things naturally we would have to advocate for. Mm -hmm. The students of UPSC are going through something that's, excuse my language, doesn't sound well and doesn't make sense. Um, looking at the economic situations, uh, in this period especially, if uh, students delay in payment of their fees for a moment, I think there should be a payment plan uh, feasible enough to make it okay for parents or students who are even struggling to pay the fees themselves mm. so that they don't even uh, drop out. But then again, they are burdened with the fact that once you delay in uh, paying your fees, then that penalty of 400 CD or so is added to your, uh, what do we call it? The debt. Uh, uh, the debt. Mm. And then, or it's either you, 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 you defer. And it makes it difficult for students. We are not supposed to even make situations of such difficult for students, especially knowing the uh, situation we find ourselves in, coupled with even the academic struggles the students will go through. Mm. There are individuals genuinely the fees are not being paid by their parents. Some are doing as many as three jobs, many are jobs, just to put uh, some pieces together to be able to afford such fees. And if you are not fortunate to uh, even get a scholarship, the rich men who are even supposed to, who can even afford, are uh, even enjoying the scholarship that the rich, the, uh, the poor ones are supposed to enjoy, and they are still trying to pay, why do you burden them with extra cost? Mm. So I feel this thing should be looked at. And it's, I, I'm not sure it's peculiar to just UPSA. I think other private universities are also doing so. And I think invest, University of Ghana, the times I remember, you were given some grace period to pay, even in the middle of the semester, if you're able to pay some, you, by, the sem, by the time the semester ends, you should be able to complete mm -hmm. your payments. Mm -hmm. And I think it was laud laudable. And if this as uh, uh, rolled out to other tertiary institutions. It will all well because I don't see the reason why students should be struggling in this. And I've seen a lot of students deferring just because they can't afford such penalties and even uh, the, 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 uh, the original fees. So are, they, are, are they being asked to pay in full? Because in the case of the University of Ghana, I don't know if, there's, if, if it has changed. During our time, like 75% or yes, even and register, and register. And then as time goes on, you complete. Exactly. Is, is that the case there? I think their, now, their situation is such that, um, for instance, if your, your fees is about uh, 2,000 cities mm -hmm. and you're unable to raise for the semester, and maybe you're able to raise about 800 or 1,000, 
I think you should be able to, you should be allowed to even register mm -hmm. so that by the time exams get close, mm -hmm. by the time the semester closes, then at least you might have gotten enough period to settle up. Mm -hmm. But I, I think they are stifled. They are not, they are not giving such enough space. Could it be the case that uh, the university is doing so because the students are, are abusing the, the um, what's the word? Their leniency. The, yes, their leniency. No, because Abrantipa, sometimes, you Abrantipa, see, when you are Abrantipa, relaxed. Abrantipa. See, the issue is that mm -hmm. whether relaxed or not, there are real students who are struggling. Mm -hmm. There are real butter and bread issues people are struggling to face. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, looking at the uh, 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 price insurgence, like it increases mm -hmm. and a whole lot, it's affecting a whole lot of things. So, if you're considering that okay, people are abusing the liberty given to pay fees, eventually, if the person doesn't pay, the person wouldn't graduate, mm -hmm. the person wouldn't even end up. If by the time you're writing exams, it's enough grace mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. for you to raise fees because you risk not being allowed to write, isn't it? Yeah. I think that is even better because it allows grace period for people to uh, uh, relax, work and pay. So, so your my issue reason, is with the penalty. Exactly. I mean, my issue, key issue is that it's pushing the young ladies into what they are not supposed to do because they would have to raise money. Some are in school, their parents are able to pay the initial fees and mm -hmm. the rest becomes a problem. And we are the same people who will be complaining about sugar daddies and a whole lot. But the acts and the, stand, uh, uh, the, the, the kind of templates we roll out uh, the rationale behind uh, 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 these young ladies uh, uh, forced into such uh, 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 situations, mm -hmm. and then we come back and start accusing them. Let's make the system okay for everyone, so that the girl will not even be thinking of her uh, fees and hostel fees. Remember, the hostel fees are even uh, expensive. So if the, uh, the, 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 the person has maybe about 5000 6000 the person would have to divide and pay part as fees and pay and secure the hostel because you would have to look for a place to sleep even mm. before you go for lectures. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't expect someone to raise 10,000, 8,000 to just pay fees on the go. Mm. You get it. Mm. So for me, I feel they should look at all these things again. And the scholarship secretariat, those in charge of scholarship, please stop giving it to the world to do students. Scholarships are meant for those who are struggling, brilliant but needy. And I don't see the reason why a minister's son or an MP's son should be enjoying scholarship. Or maybe a, a, a head pastor's son who is paid well and other allowances. Mm. Why should they be enjoying scholarships at the detriment of church members who are mere traders and struggling to pay their fees? Like these are things we, we need to decouple in terms of uh, our politicking. Mm. Because everything is like politics. Mm. Once your father is the ambassador, you have the luxury of... Uh, not paying fees here, you can enjoy this scholarship and travel and go. Meanwhile, your father could have afforded it if he, uh, he was even asked to pay. Mm -hmm. But these are things that are, we are struggling. Later, we cause that decay in our moral fiber, and when we finish, we're blaming it on who? All right, that's uh, Magduna Nane Asari, aka Romeo, uh, Madina Social Welfare Assemblyman. He is unhappy about the treatment being meted out to students of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, I yes, that they are, they are being asked to pay a penalty if they are unable to pay their school fees for a certain, within a certain period. Okay, so we'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk about Efia Shwasnega, we'll talk about the Say Something, See Something, and Say Something campaign against terrorism that um, our celebrities are being involved in. It's Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. Don't go away. What's up, guys? This is Black Sheriff, and I'm outside with Bloggers Forum. We are Brantipa on Ghana Web TV. Keep watching, keep it locked, you understand? Love. Welcome back. It's Bloggers Forum on Ghana Web TV. I am Abrantipa. My guest, Magduna Nane Asari, aka Romeo, and then the author of the book, Everything That Happened and the People. That made it. Nenebi. Or say, Wakoye photo shoot. And the Air 20 book. Now, let's talk about Efia Schwarzenegger. So, Efia Schwarzenegger made a post. In fact, uh, it was a video, and the video came with a caption. And that has generated controversy in the showbiz space with um, Sam George, a member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, even 
you know, making a comment on it. And I read, she says, I don't hit a barren at 47. I pray for them. Nature is already dealing with you, and now you can't see. Sorry, your life is delayed. Why report to Abrabumu Abrabumu F9. At your age, no child, no man to call your own. And menopause has set in, so I understand your frustration. By the way, I am busy paying university fees, and tomorrow is PTA meeting. You can't say this about yourself. The next time you want to run your mouth, look for your mates, a.k.a. your fellow barons. Mothers are very busy people. When you meet responsible mothers like me, ask how much a Montezero fees uh, cost and see how useless you are as a woman in the society. Enjoying my hotel in Canitz. Help me tell your boss, oh sorry, my ex. Please, if you don't want to hear certain things, don't look for a mad woman's trouble. I won't call you mother of twins if you are a barren, period. She posts another one and says, now that I have your attention, I, Queen Efia Schwarzenegger, will never work with my ex regardless of the money involved. I can't disrespect my man like that. Anti second choice. You want nothing. You were offered what I rejected. Where were you when your boss, sorry, my ex, was kissing my mm, just for logo? Whilst you are at it, ask him how much he paid for just a picture. I am not cheap like you. The rest are insults, naked insults I can't read. So when she said this, a number of people commented. This one says, this is so heartless on the side of a fierce nigger to attack your fellow woman like this. In fact, the hands that fed you when you were nobody. We are just giving this woman attention. And I must say, it's baseless. If you is just one mm, woman with no manners, that's all. Calling a woman barren is the most disrespectful utterance someone can do towards a female. If you are nigger, is not a good example to emulate by all standards. May the people we ever helped never become a uh, reason to shed tears. And this one says, this is the most heartless and wicked attack I have ever read on woman by a woman. Um, he mentions a name. We don't know about the name, so we just leave the name out of it. And this post was made, we don't know what triggered it, uh, but the most important thing is that she's been called out for calling her fellow woman a barry. Let me begin with Romeo. What your initial reaction was when you read her post? I think. By the way, Efia Schwarzenegger is a radio presenter and a comedian. Yeah. I think we've given too much room for buffoonery. And this is the result of it. So, you see, uh, when all these things started, and Yama we in Ashasia, we like yes, so so, and they've enjoyed the mileage, they've enjoyed the numbers, and they are making money out of the numbers. So it's it fuels their idiocy to be able to like feel free to throw out or churn out anything that comes to mind. But Abrantepa, you see. Media or social media is making it difficult for better regulations and people talk about um, moral decadence and a whole lot, but Ifiashua is a canker. Ifiashua is a canker because she says it when she wants and nothing happens. And she, she easily finds herself in the books of some top-notch top people, so she feels she has the protection, so she can say whatever she likes. 
No reasonable woman will label another woman barren, regardless of the circumstance. I won't even wish it on my worst enemy. But it tells you that she's pained uh, with a sort of uh, uh, incident that happened with delay going to, uh, joining uh, Win to me uh, a group of uh, companies or what what have you. So it, it looks like because it will take so much pain. Is, is, for, there, is there a connection there? No, but I feel, yeah, because uh, delay was like she's the boss of the airwaves and blah blah blah. Mm. Uh, there's none like it. Like it's just like a rapper. Right? You say things to elevate yourself and a whole lot to mean that you are the best among the rest. Mm. So whoever would have to banter you or reply would also have to set sort of the bar a notch higher so that everyone would get talking. But hitting below the line by calling another woman barren. It's like just calling a, a woman openly prostitute. Which, like, even in movies, you mm. realize that it, uh, it gets uh, uh, muted when uh, such words are being pronounced because it's something that hurts or can destroy someone. And no one is saying anything about it. Now, if nothing at all, if for nothing at all, I, I wouldn't have known Ifyashua if not for delay because of Ifyashua, Snega, that kind the of... TV the, the TV series. Mm. So <laughs> people must learn that the fingers that fed you, no matter how uh, it pricks you, you don't bite it off. Mm. You can show your anger and your dissatisfaction in many ways, but there are some lines you don't have to cross. And it's like we've just allowed uh, Ifyashua on the loose and she's just touching anyone. I, I, it's, it's high time people really take care to the cleaners or deal mm. with her in that kind of legal manner. At least if there's a serious fine on her, a defamation on her, she would get to know that there are restrictions to whatever but you see, we are in a system where whom you know is the order of the day. So mm. she feels she has uh, the backing of some people because obviously, if she's not in Asimese's camp, she'll be in another person's camp. And she knows that when it has to do with uh, finding solace, she will know where to find it. Mm. And that's how she's playing her game. Mm. Uh, photo shoot mine. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> You know, I don't like to use legal this when I'm arguing. Mm -hmm. I'm lying. I like to do that. But there is this um, case that happened in Ghana in 1959. And it's a reported case in Ghana called Wenchiwa versus Redua. Mm -hmm. It's a case involving two women who lived together in the same house. They were neighbors in Bompata Kumasi. And they got into a heated argument. And one person, Call the other person, insulted the other person by saying, say, whoa, do do mm. You understand? She was insulting her private part, saying that her private part was sticky, right? And when the lawyer was arguing before the court, the lawyer said, <laughs> the lawyer was struggling to use the words that the uh, family say. The accused used. The accused, the, the defendant The defendant, used, okay. Used, right? So, the judge told him that the court is not contaminated by foul language. And that is something that when you go to law school in Ghana, one of the first things you learn is that the court is not contaminated by foul language. So you can use languages, any language, if it is important in the case, right? Mm -hmm. But the most important decision in the law, in, the, in this particular case, is that the judge said that in Ghanaian culture, there is a certain language that you cannot use in referring to a woman because those languages have serious implication on the woman. Mm -hmm. So when you say a woman's private past things, that is a very grave insult to not just her person, her identity, her hygiene, and everything about her, right? So there are certain expressions that as Ghanaians, we are not supposed to use when you're talking about women. Mm -hmm. So insulting her private part, Calling her, example, he used a prostitute. He's calling a woman a barren. Those are expressions that carry serious, grave, uh, what's the name? Interpretation or mm. meanings, right? And it is sad that as a nation, you know, I'm somebody who doesn't care so much about, I'm a free speech advocate. I think that it should be absolute free speech, right? But I think that the honor should be on the individual. Mm. That when you are talking, 
You should be circumspect of the words you are using. You should be circumspect on how you address people. Calling somebody barren in an issue that has nothing to do with you, like that has nothing to do with her barrenness. If maybe the person, which is not, is not needed, right? Mm-hmm. But if somebody maybe had insulted your child or had insulted how you raised your children, and you reply by calling them barren, I could understand that. Mm-hmm. But if the war doesn't call for war, or you're not, you're not supposed to draw a gun. So I don't know how to say this, but I feel like, just like Romeo is saying, we are losing a lot of things that hold our society together as a nation. Mm. And as a nation, is because we, it starts with Kumawood, right? The biggest Kumawood stars are people who insult people the most. But we always saw it as just entertainment. It's just a movie. But when we highlight those people and those insults, now it moves from just being a movie to real life. Mm -hmm. Now the biggest people we have in our country are the guy who lives in the US, so I don't want to mention his name because I feel like I'm making him bigger, Mm. using insults without addressing issues. If you have issues and you want to address those issues, they are not, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't have anything at, at wrong with, you know, criticizing the government, criticizing people in authority. You, it's our civic responsibility to do that. But when you're using language that is strongly worded insults, that has no, that says nothing about the issue you're addressing, mm. then we are losing a lot as a nation. And in this particular instance, me, I've had bosses who have had falling out with. We've all had bosses we've had falling out with. Mm-hmm. That we don't, you know, have, we are no more on speaking terms with because maybe of the way maybe they treated us when we were working with them. So we don't like them as people. But they are your bosses. You understand? Mm-hmm. He's somebody who gave you an opportunity. Your name was a name that was given to you by this person. This person created a TV show, created a character gave the character a name, and then you were given that character's name, and then that character's name is not your stage name. You owe your very existence as an artist to this person. You are supposed to have given respect. You're supposed to at least give some respect to this person. I know sometimes eh, when people are trying to prove they don't care, they show how much they care. Mm-hmm. They are trying to prove that you, know, you are quote unquote over your ex, and then in all your posts, you're bringing up that, that ex. That shows how much you are pained by the fact that you are no mm-hmm. more with that mm-hmm. ex. You understand? Mm-hmm. So she need to get over it. She need to get over whatever the ex was giving him that, you know, uh, she's not getting anymore. Whether it was the deed that was so good, whether it was the money. And, you know, she need to get over it. And she need to grow up as a person, you know. And there are some things that she said that I don't have any problem with. Which is? Like about the delegates and how why they voted him that i don't have a problem with because mm. that's just politics right and there are some people that were voted for in both parties that i didn't like mm-hmm. right and you are free as a civic uh, person in ghana to have that view but you know bringing in somebody and using words which have no interpretation or no bearing to the case i think that was a low blow next we'll be talking about terrorism so we We've been told to be very mindful because there could be um, an attack. And so the, the initially there was a statement asking people to, to be wary where they go, not to be at places where there are so many people there because these are places where normally it, it, it becomes the target of the terrorist. Then we heard of some celebrities being appointed as ambassadors of the See Something, Say Something campaign that is um, against the terrorism. So that if you, if you happen to see something fishy, something suspicious, you prompt authorities in order to prevent the attack. And our celebrities were part of it, Empress Gifty, and Nana Abba Anamwa. The, some members of the clergy were also part. But, Adam Bona is a security expert, and he's been saying that this appointment, not, 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 those who have been appointed, they should actually reject it. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk about that.
I hear one lady give tea. I think she's a musician, a government musician, has been uh, earmarked or she's been selected to be campaign ambassador for the fight against terrorism. My advice to her would be to resent the acceptance. She should let those who appointed her know publicly that she doesn't want it because, first of all, they are going to begin to trail, they are going to begin to follow her, they are going to begin to profile her, they are going to obviously target her. And usually, they will do this because then they see you to be one of the people who is likely to hinder them, even though these people are bad people. And so my thing that it's not done anywhere. And so if this woman was advised properly, she would have said, no, thank you. I cannot do such a thing. This is not a fight that, uh, you know, against COVID. This is not some form of entertainment. I'm talking about people who are killing people. I'm talking about people who are destroying nations. And then you, you say what? You select some individuals or an individual to be a campaign ambassador and she accepted to do it because she was ill informed. It is totally wrong. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't, no nation would do that. Even when they are killing soldiers, Togo, they killed several soldiers in Togo. You go to Burkina Faso, they killed several soldiers in Burkina Faso. Cote d'Ivoire, several soldiers in Niger. They are killing soldiers because you see, when they see the security of the armed forces, they see the armed forces or the security agencies to be uh, the face against the campaign against their work. And therefore, they will target them. So, who uh, took that decision to make this woman uh, or some individuals or celebrities uh, ambassadors? Right, so that's um, security expert Adam Bonner. Now, away from that, the national security, they, they want to be educating the people, and so the media has been asked to provide wider coverage for the education in order, in order to deepen uh, the understanding of threats of terrorism. My Mr. has a free lawyer. Ho. Please, uh -huh. um, I want to... Who are the celebrities apart from... Uh, Nana Banamwa is mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. We have Kofi Kinata, Kwame Sifakai, Jifa Bampo, Gifty Adoe, a.k.a. Press Gifting, Dr. Lawrence Tete. So far, this is the list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say is, something. Is it necessary? I wanted to, to say something mm -hmm. about the list, but mm -hmm. uh, let me hold myself. Why? What, what, what do you want to say about the list? I want, I'm curious about You the think some people should have been there? No, no, I'm curious about the criteria. Criteria using in, in, in choosing in them. In choosing them, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking that mm. if I'm somebody who wants to commit terrorism, why would a number number one or Kwam Sefa can be the reason I change my mind? But anyway, that's the... That's the uh, no, it is not for you, the terrorist. terrorist. Mm -hmm. It's for the citizens. Mm -hmm. So that when they see something, they will say something. To who? If they see anything suspicious, they report to authorities. What is anything suspicious? You see, the uh, whole list of the see something say something campaign started with the government putting out a what's the name a poster i was supposed to say was it posted by the presidencies was tweeted by the presidency mm. they tweeted a picture first was a picture that has a guy a woman dressed in the uh My veil, and uh, yeah. she had a mox behind her yeah that was the first picture they put out mm -hmm. and a few minutes later they put a, out another picture of a guy and has he has a church behind right mm -hmm. but when they put out the picture of the woman you know the first picture they put out and people started reacting about how uh, insensitive that was how stereotypical that was mm -hmm. because it was a muslim woman um, the friend is saying and, and there was a mosque and there was a mosque mm -hmm. i want to i'm thinking that the reaction to that is why they didn't even consider having somebody from northern ghana or having the muslim background as part of the ambassador i want to believe that the you see i feel like this government let me say this this government from the beginning of their presidency in january 2017 to date has become very very reactionary i will not forget this even if the whole ghana forget it on the sunday that when COVID was announced that COVID was a pandemic, mm -hmm. a week, uh, the Friday, 
the president had a press conference and with members, people from the health sector, and then he said Ghana was not going to have a lockdown because blah, 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 he gave so many reasons. And then two days later, he changed his mind and announced the lockdown. Mm. I felt like since that day, I had a suspicion about what, how this government react, how this government operates. This government operates without carefully assessing situations and having decisions that make you believe that are, they are rooted in science and data. And now, I'm totally convinced, 1,000% convinced, that this government doesn't make decisions based on science and data. They make decisions based on social media reactions. So if they put out a picture, a social media reacts negatively, now they have to, the next decision have to appease social media. Oh, how are you convinced that that was the only I'm, poster I'm just convinced. Had? I'm just convinced. I'm, that's my, my, convinc my conviction. But anyway. That's, 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 that's not fair, is it? <laughs> it's not fair, but that is based on their actions. That's the convic conviction I have. But okay. anyway, um, the terrorism, that p picture they put out, mm -hmm. the picture they didn't say anything about what makes somebody suspicious to be a, a, a terrorist. What makes you look at somebody and say that you need to uh, report them to the authorities? Is that not the reason we have the ambassadors? So To help in the education. OK, so that is. So what are the ambassadors supposed to do now? They are supposed to help educate the people. About what makes somebody suspicious to be a terrorist. Exactly. And other things, like things to look out for and encourage people to you know, report. You see, the problem with that mm -hmm. is now we are creating a society where we're always going to look at people as... Because things that make people, quote-unquote, suspicious terrorists of terrorism may be things that make people, you know, other, any other thing. So maybe if somebody is having extremist views, now that, that, that makes somebody, that makes a person a terrorist. If maybe I have extreme Christian views, mm. and I believe I human being on earth is supposed to be a Christian, if somebody is not a Christian, they are going to hell. For which reason, they are not even worthy to be part of my society. Now, that makes me a terrorist because I hold those views. I'm curious about what are the, what's the name? Criteria that they used in selecting, selecting. the ambassadors. Mm. Because most people in this world who end up being identified as terrorists, are people who are young people in their 20s. Most terrorists are people in their, most people act on their, on their, most people who act on being terrorists. Like most people who have been arrested as terrorists are people in their 20s. Mm. Okay, yeah. I was getting confused now. Yeah. You, are, you have brought me back. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't brought phone back. No, <laughs> and those people, I wonder what sway someone like Kwame Sefakai has on young people. We love to come to He has, he has. What? No, he's it's the, the host of, He's the host of one of the biggest morning what shows. What sway does he have on young people? You see, like Op uh, Oprah Winfrey, right? Mm -hmm. She is one of the biggest TV stars in the in the world. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have sway on people less than the age of thirty. Nobody under the age of thirty look at Oprah Winfrey. And say, I want to be. I want to listen, do something because Oprah Winfrey wants to do it. She's not Kim Kardashian. She doesn't have sway over young people, even though she's Oprah Winfrey. She's probably bigger than Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. She's not Cardi B. Even though she has sway, she's bigger than Cardi B. She doesn't have sway over young people the way Cardi B does. You understand? Even though Kwame Sefakai has, is big, she doesn't have sway over young people the way someone like Shatawale does. Because she, we, don't look, we look at him as an old person. Mm. We don't look at him like, you know, he somebody is. who is like us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. So it has nothing to do with how big you are. So I'm curious as to what, someone like Nana Mama, Nana Mama Namwa, it makes sense because she's kind of have a lot of sway over young people because she's very active on social media. Mm. But I wonder if people who are, uh, who hold views, which, or who, who are deeply into uh, their belief systems, what terrorism starts with having a belief system. Who are deeply into their belief system go on Twitter to you know pay attention to what Nama, Nama and Nama is doing. I wonder how somebody like uh, Empress, Empress Gifty, Empress Gifty, what sway she has over young people as compared to even in the Christian community. Mm -hmm. I believe that someone like Brother Sami has sway over young Christians, or someone like uh, who is the person who does you know this pop gospel abbey. I think someone that. Your turn. I was about to say question, but question is now for older people, mm. older uh, 
Joe white metal. Christians. Someone like Joe Metal may have more sway mm. over young Christians. I can say Brim Pong. Someone like that who mm -hmm. have, may have more sway than someone like, you know, Empress Gifty. Romeo, I have to say that. Uh, let me hear your submission on that. Is it necessary to have these ambassadors? I think uh, with, this, uh, with this set tone for having ambassadors for terrorism, I think very soon then we should have ambassadors uh, of uh, road carnage, road accidents, because it's killing people day in, day out. It's even uh, collecting lives than terrorism across the world in terms of numbers. Even in this country, how many terrorists attacks have we had? No. Should, should we are we just anticipating. You no, know, you see, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, 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 I'm building a point. Uh -huh. If you're, you're trying to, terrorism is not fought with loudness, mm. right? Mm. It's forced, it's actually fought with tact, discipline, mm. and with some kind of, uh, that kind of uh, 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 seriousness. Because uh, your, your, your attacker would not display his intention before you realize it happens. Mm. Even America, where it happens, where they have, uh, what do we say, uh, the accruement to even forestall uh, any uh, unexpected attack. Um, I want to ask, I don't know if I, 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 I'm, I'm open for education. Do they have ambassadors? Like, do they make noise about it that mm -hmm. we are ready for any terrorist attack? You see, these are things that uh, for me, as I, I become scared because it's like you trying to uh, invite the uninvited. Mm -hmm. Because maybe it's just, it could be a, a, a mere perception. But once you're giving it a seat, it's attracting, it's baiting other people to see that, no, let's test your pulse. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you might not be the one to suffer for it because we, the ordinary people, will be the ones to suffer because when we say Jack, you can just book your private jets and you're out, and we will still be here. Mm. So whatever we are doing has to do with security. Security is not like a comedy stage where you suspend your disbelief and say, okay, you, let's see you that you are Rambo. But maybe I'm not Rambo. I've suspended my disbelief. I'm believing this bottle is my aeroplane. You get it. Mm. But in real life, you don't, do, you don't suspend disbeliefs. You work with it. You work seriously when it has to do with security. So, uh, people have just panned in on just Empress Adoya because people ask, in what capacity? You get it. Mm. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Ibad? This Ibad. Ibad. Ibad, mm. right? Uh, the security, the security analyst. guy. Mm. The guy, at least, if not, he has read something on security intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, Entry Danso, Professor Enin and the likes who are security gurus mm -hmm. are there, they can look at this situation and say, no, reading from what's happening, if you compare this to Somalia or Nigeria in maybe five years ago or 10 years ago, which ended up, or in Kenya, where uh, one of our professors died in Kenya, or is it Professor Kobia yeah, or no? Professor yeah. 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 Maybe this was what happened. The transition came out this way, and this was what happened. Mm -hmm. So maybe, they will advise government behind closed doors that this is what you are supposed to do to forestall any such happenings. Mm -hmm. So you are taking in, uh, intelligent and technical views from people with know-how. You get it. Mm -hmm. But parading people for being loud on radio or being uh, all over the place for social media, whether gospel or whatsoever, you, to be ambassadors as what? To make the state, to be paying them and other and allowances. No, you see, there are things that we need to be serious about. If we are, we are going to be ambassadors, let's create ambassadorial checks where the people will be reporting to the government or the presidency that based on our research, because we are active on social media, and these things are not going well. Mm -hmm. There's no water in this village. So in another one, I'm in the lights, could be ambassadors for uh, 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 clean water. It even helps in uh, achieving <coughs> our target for uh, uh, SDG uh, by uh, 2030. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm. So at the end of the day, let's create, let's not just form things because we want to form them and let, uh, it's, sometimes it's meant to neutralize people who would even intend to attack the government in terms of uh, uh, what it does. Mm. You get it. Mm. So for me, what I feel is that this is a, a, a fruitless journey. This is, a, excuse my language, uh, I don't want to use the word, but it's a needless entity and it's a waste of 
government uh, 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 money and space. And the fact that it's even baiting other people to even have that idea that Ghanaians say they are ready. ready. Just like when the Ukraine issue started and people started joking with it on social media, uh, trying to say things about Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we don't have the muscle to, to, to rub shoulders with certain levels, uh, echelons of uh, security uh, 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 prone zones. You get it? Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with issues, people may not even attack you because, oh, you're going to for crowd. They don't say anything about us. Mm -hmm. But when you start telling the people that we are ready, you're ready for what? Even our elections, we are never ready. Because people have died until now. We don't know who killed those people. We've not been able to come to terms that, okay, family A, family B, this is what happened. But we, we were able to have, hold a vigil for Floyd way back in America. But nine people have died because of America, mm. uh, uh, because of elections in this country. And these are the loopholes you are supposed to be digging to see the traces. How? Because you won't expect that someone will put a gun on your head and you also can have a way to defend yourself and you say you won't, you want to die. Are you Jesus? No. So, Abrantipa, the technical way is that. Let's look out for what builds up mm -hmm. such situations that make people want to act in a particular way. And this can be done by the expert like uh, Professor Enin, the, uh, what we call it, Professor uh, Enchi Danso, mm -hmm. even Ibad Mohammed, whom uh, people were even making mockery, mockery of. of. He, at least, he has read, and he's, he's at least uh, enlightened when it has to do with some element of security intelligence. Mm. These are people, at least, even if there's the need, these are the people you should even use for technical, and, uh, uh, technical know-how and advice. Would you, would, you, uh, would you expect the celebs to turn down the, <laughs> the appointment? If you're a celebrity, what you do is that you owe the people, right, mm -hmm. that kind of honesty and then that kind of uh, confidence and belief to be able to, to tell it to leadership mm -hmm. that not because I am in your fold, but I need to tell you the truth so that tomorrow when I'm not around, people will make even reference to me that I was able, you remember Black Coffee, mm -hmm. when he, uh, she was appointed a deputy a creative arts uh, she was the um, deputy director or director deputy, of, deputy. of creative Hub yes, arts yeah, right agency. Yeah. And then what happened? She said she's, be, she's being paid, right? Mm. She's being paid monthly for no work done. Mm -hmm. She can't enjoy at the expense of the suffering masses. So she did what? She resigned. That is someone with integrity. Mm. So if you want to be measured uh, with that kind of uh, standard <clears throat> in terms of having integrity, Question your appointment and make the government know that this is what you think of it. And if this, you suggest, like I've given my suggestions, mm. any reasonable person will agree with me, honestly speaking. Okay. I'm really peeved. Okay, so. Uh, oh, okay, you want to pick yeah, on two things he said, right? Two things, quickly. Yeah, so the thing about what he said about uh, Mozanin, government wanted to use. So, uh, to shut out people, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the definition of terrorism is uh, the unlawful use of violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Mm. So, people, you know, there's a lot of, you know, anger, anger about the state of the economy now. So, a lot of people are agitating. There have been reports that some people want to brand, uh, brandish guns at the June 4th mm -hmm. rally uh, this weekend. So, there is a lot of anxiety in the country right now. There's a lot of unrest in the country right now. And some of this unrest could, uh, in the broad definition of terrorism, could border into areas that could be uh, considered ter terrorist language, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think that in Ghana, terrorism is what people, uh, more than they aim towards when they are angry maybe use of you know coup d'etats or advocating for coup d'etats as something Ghanaians are more likely to do than terrorism or oh, but are, are, are you limiting the people who could execute whatever it is to only Ghanaians 
No, 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 but they can be foreigners. They could be could be foreigners yes. living in Ghana uh -huh. who are also agitated because I was talking to this white guy recently. He told me he's been living in Ghana for the past 19 years, mm. and this is the first time he's feeling the heat. Yeah, he's feeling like a lack, lack of. Uh, he's feeling insecure in Ghana. Oh, okay. Yes. So, but all this pours to us. We have this. We there is this history that we are told that uh, you know the. 66 school was founded by foreigners, but mm. it's still in the line of food, it has not uh, terrorism. So yes, government is trying to use, I think that he's up to something when he said government is trying to use this to silence dissenters in this. Because, you know, Ghana have a history of the government. This government in particular have been very hard on people trying to, uh, what's the name? I more than criticize them. Point well noted, Mark Donadanea Asari, aka Romeo Madina, social welfare assemblyman, he's an event organizer, artist manager, and a member of the Miss Ghana team. The the <laughs> the author of the book, Everything That Happened and the People Who Made It, Nene B is also a the same they come home, but we're happy. Yeah, yeah. Still yes, a the author the of the book, everything happened. Oh, the people who made it. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you for coming, gentlemen. Let me announce that we are going on a break. Not a break, as in we are going and coming on the show. But yes, we are going for a one month break, and then we'll return with, you know, another package. The show will not come back as bloggers forum. We'll be back with another name or a different name. Okay. So this is the last we'll change episode. something a this bit. Is the last, yes, this is the last. This is the last episode of Bloggers Forum. Yes. I didn't know that. The last episode of Bloggers Forum. How long have Bloggers Forum been running? Close to three years, right? Wow. Yeah, close Started to three in years. The COVID. Oh, yes, COVID. before COVID. Before I think COVID. it was early 2020. Mm. Either February or late, early February or late January. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And. Congratulations on running this show for three years. It's mm. been a very good platform. And a lot of people do watch this program a lot. Last time, I had a call from my dad. I said, oh, you saw an episode. You didn't like the language. <laughs> I'm like, you, this is how we talk. You didn't like the language I was using. Yeah. Yeah, because I had used a lot of sexual behaviors. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, I think that the show has been an important addition to the entertainment space. And then the conversations you have is different from the conversations being had on other entertainment platforms. And the angles you take the conversations from is different from how conversations have been taken from on other platforms. You know, the language being used on a lot of entertainment platforms is, is in the Efia Schwarzenegger language, Efia Schwarzenegger level of thinking. And that has not argued well for the industry. And even when they are treating important subjects, like say when they're talking about maybe musica or fight pack, the way they talk about it, they talk about it in language that the lay people on the street don't care about. I don't care, people who are not really deep in the entertainment industry don't really care about behind the scenes unless it is attached to some gossip, right? Mm. And I think that you're able to blend, you know, I'm saying you because you are the very producer or the producer of the show, right? As well as the host. And you know your team is also doing well, right? And the, you are able to blend a lot of you know the gossip aspect of the industry with the important news in a way that doesn't make it boring. Mm. And your choice of panelists, myself included, are also exceptional. You know, I'm one of the most exceptional human beings God ever made. <laughs> <laughs> this man, he's a poet too. So yes, Romeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We are coming back rebranded everything, the name of the show, the, the venues that we'll be shooting, the duration and everything? I think uh, it's in order because in everything you do, you should have so, sort of uh, uh, um, reassessment mm. and also hibernating and then coming back in with a different vibe is also on course. So I think uh, so far it's been good, it's been fruitful. People have been following the platform and it has created some Kind of, it has also augmented uh, the followership of most of your panelists, mm. and it's been an avenue where a lot of people look up to. So I, I'm sure, yes, they're going to be missing the weekly releases, but uh, patience is 
a solid vet you everyone needs. So patiently, I know people will be waiting and in the new form, I think they will uh, enjoy it more. We would also uh, up our research game and also come with a different vibe to augment the status of the show. Mm. All right. So whilst we, whilst we go on break, we'll bring you some of the um, beautiful episodes that were shot, you know. So if you missed it, you can still get them on our YouTube channel uh, and then on Ghana Web TV on the website, www.ghanaweb.com. You see the Ghana Web TV. Just click and watch all the episodes that we have shot since 2020. Thank you so much, um, Nene B. Thank you, Magna Nanea Asari. Thanks to Anoda Samuabedu, Vaida uh, Duchumwabuatin, Zeda, Zion Felix, Kobiche, um, all the people who have been on the show. Uh, this, this man is a nice guy. He's with the health sector. He's a photographer. Kobe, he's also a Kobe. Uh, oh. And yeah, the guy at Accra FM too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe Blay. Yes, Kobe Blay has also been on the show. Thanks to all the guy those at Accra FM, what's his name? Who? Uh, is it Karim? Yes, Karim. Yeah, yeah. Karim, Karim. I like yes. that guy. Yeah. yeah, Abdul Karim Ibrahim. Thanks yeah. to everyone who has been on the show. Thanks to Mrs. Benis or Parijan. When, when I'm not there, she does it best. And sometimes I feel like me need, if I don't have leave to go, I should, I should go and leave so that, <laughs> so that she would do it. Yes. And so thanks to everyone who has contributed to the success of the show. Like I mentioned, we are going for a month break. When we return, it will be an all new edition uh, or episodes of, of the show. A few things are going to change. And so we'll be back. Uh, keep watching our shows on Ghana Web TV. Thanks to the crew, Sandra Obribia, to Kwame Ajaho, to Pearl, a.k.a. Awam Judge, to Sami Ejri. <laughs> Everett for the production work. Let me help my brother there. The guy I speak Dangle with. Who? The guy I speak Dangle with. He's not here today. Who does he speak Dangle with? Kwame Adam. Oh, okay. okay. Kwame is on leave. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Shouts to Nane Aredu, aka Nane 18. Yeah. I'm Benefo Boabin Abratipa. We are.